Hello and welcome to today's video, my little squid. You are growing up before my eyes and I consider myself lucky to have borne witness to your accomplishments. Your papa is proud. You started an R3 before graduating to a middleweight bike on MT-07 and now you're riding with the big dogs on your turbo Hayabusa, but something isn't right. You no longer recognize yourself when you look in the mirror. You thought being a Busa boy would be fun, but now which eats spool of the turbo, you drift further from God's light. The threat of death is no longer a rush, but a necessity to feel anything at all. You spray painted kanji on the side of your family's Corolla, and your internet search history is filled with topics like stretched Hayabusa, custom Hayabusa, Marvel fandom, big titty Hayabusa girlfriend. Even I will admit, you maybe have gone a little too far. Thank you for coming with me on this. I want to relieve you of the heavy burden of the Busa Boy lifestyle. Just call me Paul Yam. It is time to return to form to the true two-wheeled machine that trumps a performance motorcycle in about every way. The step-through scooter. Automatic transmission, storage compartments, is this the purest form of motorcycling? Well, probably not, but it could still make sense for you to own a scooter as a motorcyclist. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Cardo. We'll talk more about that later in the show. Before we get started, take a second to click that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we turbocharge a Honda Ruckus. Let's go! The motor scooter has been around since the early 1900s, but it gained popularity in post-World War II Europe as an easy option for easy, convenient personal transportation. The scooter is unique in the two-wheeled world in a few ways. Most noticeably, it is the step-through design that has been ubiquitous of the style since its inception. This allows the rider to sit full within the scooter in a relaxed and comfortable position with their feet on the floorboards and arms right in front of them on the handlebars, kind of like they're sitting in a chair. Unlike a moped, which necessitates pedaling to get the engine started, a scooter receives all of its power from a small displacement engine, usually ranging from 50 to 200 cc's, although there are some large displacement scooters available, but that kind of defeats the purpose, if you ask me. Additionally, most scooters come with a fully automatic transmission, so no need to shift at all like you do on semi-automatic bikes like the Super Cub. Before we go any further, I also don't mean an electric kick scooter like those kinds you see drunk white ladies eating shit on if you happen to be on downtown on a Friday night. Those are not cool. Did you know most motorcycle manufacturers still make scooters to this day? I know, right? Who knew? There is a secret scooters tab on most manufacturer sites that Big Motorcycle doesn't want you to see. Squids hate him! Get cheap, easy, and fun transportation with this one simple trick! Here are some examples of the types of scooters I'm talking about. The Honda Metropolitan. This scoot has a 49cc single cylinder engine, an automatic transmission, and weighs just 179 pounds. It's got that classic step through design and a functional 22 liter storage area. For Americans, that is almost 6 gallons. That's a lot of hentai. The Metropolitan costs just $2,599, and I know some of you spent more than that on your gaming PC. It has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, which means you would get to see more of your overpriced condo complex as you buzz over to the coffee shop. Next is the Honda Ruckus. By far the most badass of scooters available, the Ruckus would put some hipsters clapped out scrambler build to shame. The Ruckus still uses the pass-through design, but it is unfaired like some of its more frilly counterparts and features a raw, stripped-down aesthetic. It has the same 49cc single from the Metropolitan, it has more rear suspension travel than most sportsters on the road, and an aggressive semi-knobby tires making it a beast in the dirt. The Ruckus costs just $2,899 and also has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, which is more than enough for blazing trails and jumping pallets behind Publix. At least, that's what I would do if I owned a Ruckus. The Yamaha Zuma 125 is a bit of a step up from the scooter offerings from Honda. The Zuma is a scooter in ADV cosplay, an option for burgeoning ADV dads who lost all their assets in the divorce settlement. The scooter has a 125cc engine, has both fuel injection and liquid cooling, and it makes 8 horsepower. Laugh now, but by the end of the video, you'll see. There is no adjustable suspension, but it does have disc brakes in the front and rear, which is a nice touch. The Zuma has a digital LCD dash, USB charge port, and lots of storage, which will come in handy when you ride it across the continent from Alaska to Argentina. This scooter costs 3699 bucks from the dealership. Suzuki brings the Bergman to the table as their flagship scooter. It comes in 200 and 400 cc configurations, but we'll talk about the former. I don't know if I can get behind a 400 cc scooter. It seems to be a bit a little too much. We're definitely moving into more premium territory with the Bergman 200. Aesthetically, I can't tell if it looks more like a miniature version of a Hayabusa or a 1996 Ford Taurus, but it sure has some true aero chad energy. It has the familiar step through design, 200 cc engine, automatic transmission, lots of storage. I think you get the gist at this point, right? I just 
just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page before we start talking about the benefits of scooter ownership. Scooters are similar to mopeds and groms in the way that they have a die-hard subculture, and if you partake in some of those weekly mini rides, you're gonna wanna stay connected to your friends while you're on the road. That's where Cardo comes in. Cardo makes some of the best industry-leading motorcycle communicator systems. They are the brand we use and trust while out shooting videos to bring you the latest and greatest motorcycle content. We love Cardo so much, we actually sell them on our store at shop.yamanoob.co. Head over to the site and check out all the features on the PackTalk Edge. Even better, if you choose to pick one up, you will be entered to win one of our giveaway bikes where every dollar you spend is one entry to win. Again, that is shop.yamanoob.co. Thanks, Cardo. Now back to the video. Okay, you've seen a few scooters in this video, and you're thinking to yourself, why would I need a little scooter when I have my Jigster Thou or my big ADV bike or my plastic pink Barbie Jeep? Well, first and foremost, they are dirt cheap to purchase and operate, my dude. For sometimes less than three grand, you can get a little scooter that gets over 100 miles to the gallon. And with current gas prices, that is starting to sound like a pretty good selling point. I am not saying it makes sense to replace your motorcycle with a scooter outright, but with how cheap it is to get one, it could make a suitable second or third bike for bopping around town for pennies on the dollar. With it being so inexpensive and low risk, you also don't have to worry about any pricey insurance premiums. Depending on the state in which you live, certain smaller displacement scooters also have less strict licensing and registration requirements, so you'll see some of the cost savings there are as well. Thinking of a scooter as a fun way to keep the miles off your main bike and not have to spend any time in the cage you call a 2017 Nissan Rogue, Rogue One Star Wars Edition. Scooters are just really fun to ride too. Sure, motorcycles are fun too and that's why we're all here, right? But a scooter is fun in a goofball, low risk, slow speed type of way. A scooter won't replace a real bike for any of you who have already caught the bug, but it can certainly suffice in the instances where you are normally lazy and want to drive your car. Think about all the times you hop in your car out of just laziness. You don't want to put on all your gear, let your bike warm up in the driveway, then baby the throttle while in stop and go traffic. Instead, you can just throw on a helmet while wearing your street clothes, hop on your scooter, fire up, and just tear off. With a low cost and low power, I don't think you have to worry too much about babying it for the first few minutes. Traffic on the main roads? A scooter is going to be a whole lot more fun to bop around side streets between stop signs than a 200 horsepower leader bike. Plus, when you get to wherever you're going, you'll have a lot more options to park a scooter than a car or even a motorcycle. Street parking is full? Put it on the sidewalk. Sidewalk is full? Lift it into the back of your friend's pickup truck. It only weighs like 200 pounds. Or just roll it into the bar with you. People do it with their baby strollers all the time. It's practically the same thing. What, they're gonna complain? Shoot them in the dick. A scooter can be a good option for your around town commuting if your motorcycle's limited on storage. Just kidding, don't shoot them in the dick. I said that a while back, don't actually do that. If you ride a big boy bagger at 80, V bike, you can just skip this section because it's not pertinent to you. But imagine this, you're on your sport bike and decide you want to stop off and get a sandwich. But just after you order your food, you remember you have to get home between noon and four to let the cable guy in. What are you going to do? You didn't get the six sport touring saddlebags for Ibusa and you left your Pokemon backpack at home. So you can't carry it in the back because all the clutch work you're going to have to do on the ride. So in the trash, the sandwich goes. A pitiful thing. But had you been savvy enough to invest in a scooter, you'd not only have storage capabilities for 12 sandwiches, but with no clutch, you could practically drink a Diet Fanta on the road while you're at it. It is honestly hard to contest the practicality of a scooter with maximum storage options. A scooter is also a super environmentally conscious way of commuting in places without great public transportation. It is probably the most efficient way to have a gas-powered personal travel vehicle with the lowest carbon footprint. An electric motorcycle or even electric scooter are going to be plagued with the limitations of range anxiety and lack the charging infrastructure, but a scooter runs on dead dinosaurs the same way your big boy bike does. It just drinks it in a much smaller quantity. In most instances, you don't need to use an entire big car to move you across town, and while most of us would still prefer to use our motorcycles anyway, something about the idea of having a small displacement scooter to get you from point A to point B without the cost, energy, and focus required to ride a full-size motorcycle honestly sounds pretty appealing. So if you guys haven't thought about a scooter yet, you kind of should, because honestly, I'm thinking about getting one. If you enjoyed this video, please take a minute to subscribe and get notified about all the new videos. We appreciate your viewership, and subscribing goes a long way for the success of the channel. Fact. Houseflies always buzz in the F major scale, which includes pitches F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and E. While not every housefly is the same size or flaps at the same speed, the measurements are always proportional, ensuring creatures consistently hit the same notes. Keep watching Yami no. Uh.